Now, with all the portal noise, all the noise in the recruiting trails, National Signing Day is just around the corner. They are, in fact, going to play the college football playoff. Gonna be a lot of fun. You got Alabama and Michigan in the Rose Bowl. That'll be an absolute movie. Can't wait for that one. Uh, they'll have Washington and Texas in the Sugar Bowl. Will be equally entertaining, different styles of games. But what I wanted to make sure we do before we make our prediction on these games a little bit later, and not later on this live show, but later probably throughout the week, let me know when y'all want to hear about this because we'll probably talk about this later uh, when it comes to our predictions. Let me know when you want to hear those. Uh, to, set, to reset the table here, what's it going to take to win a national title? For Michigan, Alabama, Texas, and Washington. They win a national title if we'll fill in the blank right now. Let's start with Michigan, though. Michigan, this is the spot they've worked to get back to. Been heartbreak each of the last two years. There was initial excitement with beating Ohio State, initial excitement with beating, you know, the, or excuse me, for, for winning the Big Ten. Now they're sitting in a spot where that is the price of admission is beating Ohio State, winning the Big Ten, and getting to the college football playoff. Can they get over the hump and win a college football playoff game? To me, they not only win the college football playoff game against Alabama, they win the national title if J.J. McCarthy becomes that difference maker. Because to be real, he's developed a lot throughout the course of this season. We talk about his numbers throwing the ball downfield and him having over 250 yards four times throughout the regular season. He had two the season before. He's come a long way throwing the football, but in a spot like this, this is where you really have to open it up and, and let him cook. Because Michigan, as good as they are running the football, that edge, I think, is going to be equalized a little bit more when they play a team like a Texas, like a Washington, like an Alabama that they're going to play in the Rose Bowl. Like That's not a team I don't think you can just show up and bully how you want to bully. To take it a step further, I don't think this is a, this is a game against Alabama where you can just keep it in the low 20s. I think you probably have to score somewhere in the range of 30 to be able to beat Alabama because Jalen Milrow is cooking. And we'll talk about Bama here in a second. But if you want to win the national championship, you got to let J.J. McCarthy take whatever training wheels that you maybe or maybe didn't have on him and let this offense elevate a little bit more because you're going to be able to have to keep pace and match scores if you want to win the national championship. And all that to me starts with Michigan being more multiple. I know they can run the football. They're dinged up on the offensive line. I still feel good about where they stand in the trenches. But is that going to be the differentiating factor? It hasn't been the last couple of seasons. If you want to get different results, I think you got to have a different approach. And that different approach to me is J.J. McCarthy being able to push the ball downfield consistently to guys like Colston Loveland and Roman Wilson. So that's a very, very big factor, obviously, in the college football playoff. It'll be a big factor for Michigan if they want to win a national championship. That Rose Bowl, man, is going to be a movie. Because on the other side of this thing, you got Alabama. And we saw Alabama up close and personal in the SEC title game against Georgia. And tell you what, man, we also saw them week two against Texas. Two vastly different teams. Very, very different teams. And so for Alabama right now, I think as it stands for what it will take for them to win a national championship, I think it'll take them playing their game, to be real. I, th I think for Alabama, and it's playing their game sounds a little bit simplistic, but to, to be able to win the national championship... I think it'll take them not turning the football over. Because Jalen Milrow, what held them back against Texas? Offense was able to score points. He was able to be special whenever he tucked it and got downfield. But when they turned the corner was when they stopped shooting themselves in the foot. When they stopped giving the, the opposition extra possessions. So they may get a rematch with Texas. But if they end up drawing Washington too, I promise you will have to be able to match scores with a team like Michael Penix Jr. Roma Dunze. And a game against Michigan, you'll be able to have to Make sure you don't give them that extra possession that they feed off of. Because we've seen Michigan. If you give them a little bit of leverage, they will apply pressure, they will squeeze, and you might not see the football back for a good eight minutes. So them taking care of the football and Jalen Milrow, being able to play within himself, I think that makes all the difference in the world for them. Now for Texas, another team we saw in person this year, man, I think it's twofold for them to win a national championship. That's not to say that it's going to require more of Texas than it would of a of a Washington or Alabama, but I just think there's two really key things they have to do to win it all. And the first is simplistic and pretty obvious, but Quinn Ewers, man, he's got to be dialed in. Because think about his journey at Texas the last couple of years. Think about what's happened with him. Early on, it was a little bit inconsistent. You saw him flash against Alabama when he got hurt, and then you saw him go into Stillwater, Oklahoma, his first year starting, half 30 in completions. And you're like, hey, these are 
two vastly different individuals. This year, it's been mostly good Quinn, to be real. I know he was dinged up, but what he did against Alabama in week two, I think is the version of Quinn Ewers you need to get in this college football playoff game. And to win a national title, you would need him to be consistent, command the offense, get it to the weapons. When Steve Sarkeesian is able to get some pace with his offense, they're able to get out ahead and play with a, play with a lead. Like Texas is very, very difficult to be able to stop and slow down. Like You don't want to spot them 10 meters in a 100-meter race, is what we say around here when it comes to Texas. Other part of this, the two full piece of this, defense has to match the tempo of the offense. Because Texas, they're great in the trenches. All right, we saw that. Tavondre Sweat, Murphy, like those dudes, all American caliber players. They're going to be good enough on the line of scrimmage to hold serve. But to beat Washington, what's it going to take? Got to be able to stop the pass a little bit. Texas giving up right around 250 yards passing a game. I don't know if that's going to cut it. I don't know if that's going to cut it if you want to beat a team like Michael Penix Jr. and what Washington's bringing to the table. So defense has to be able to hold up their end of the bargain. Because if it becomes a thing where it's a track meet, at that point, like, you're praying all game if you're a Texas fan. You're praying, hoping, wishing for a stop to get the ball back to Quinn Ewers so you can go and score with some more points. And maybe just maybe that'll be enough. Defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. Not so much in that front seven, especially, though, in the back. And that's going to be a very, very big piece of it for Texas. Now, finally, Washington. Let me just say this about Washington. And we said this early on. They're not TCU. They're not. They might wear the same color purple. They may have a similar vibe to them in the sense that they kind of won close a lot this year, especially towards the end of the year. But like, there is nothing fluky about Washington making the college football playoff. Just ask Oregon, by nature of them beating them, not once, but twice. One of those being on a neutral field. For Washington, if they want to win the national championship, I think similar to Texas, it's twofold. First part of this, the offense has to click. Washington and what they do offensively, they're lethal every single time they step out there with Michael Penix Jr. and Roma Dunze. And what they do is spread you all the way out, make you play man coverage, and then they win their man-to-man battles. If they win their man-to-man battle and Michael Penix Jr. is dialed in downfield, we have to stop. Because at that point, just what we said about Texas a second ago, it's going to be a track meet. And Michael Penix Jr. and company, with how many points a game they score and how they're able to also run the football off of that, if they're in rhythm and clicking from the jump, if you have any stuttering or or stumbling out of the gate, tough to match them. Very tough to match them. Even more so, this is the crucial part, tough to catch them. So I'll tell you what, that Sugar Bowl, whatever the over is, I I might think about taking that if I'm watching that one. Last part of this, got to be physical if you're Washington. The thing we were curious about heading into that Pac-12 title game against Oregon was what will they do running the football? Are they going to be able to generate any kind of balance against this Oregon defense? And Dylan Johnson said, I don't know if y'all know, I'm from the SEC. I'm a bad dude getting downhill. You better make sure you bring that level when you try and attack me. All right, so when it comes to Washington, where they're going to be going forward in this game, in this spot, I think they're going to be a team that challenges to be multiple. And if they can be physical and and kind of bring those safeties down just a little bit, that's where the magic happens for the Huskies. So all that's to say, this college football playoff will be cinematic in every experience before we get to 12 teams. Last of the four-team playoff. And tell you what, man, this is is one of the first years for me where it's like it, it legitimately could be any one of these four teams. So the hard count is brought to you today by our good friends at Roback. And Roback, if you if you tune into my Instagram stories on Fridays, we do a little question and answer, similar to what we do on this live show. We do it, though, through a video format on my story. We'll pin the question and answer sticker on there, and you'll ask questions. I'm always rocking Roback, and there's a reason for that. They have the best polos, best hoodies, best performance crewnecks on the market. If you need a polo, you need a, a T-shirt to last you the entirety of your game day experience. I know a lot of us now, when it comes to that fourth quarter, you're sweating a little bit, right? High stakes, especially this time of the season. Roback's got you covered. Great moisture wicking technology, four-way stretch, makes it easy to move in while keeping you feeling fresh. Roback also proudly leading the new NIL charge, having signed partnerships with college stars Cade Klubnick, Kyle McCord, Nick Singleton, Jalen Milrow, who also will be playing a college football playoff game here very, very soon, and Audrey Estime. They've also teamed up with the legendary Coach O. So, Here's the most important part. If you want to help the show, here's the deal. Use the code JD, just JD, no periods in between, 
on Roback.com for a generous 20% off all new customers. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, 20% off all performance polos, shorts, crewnecks, t-shirts, all that. That's with code JD. Just in time now for the college football playoff as we sprint through the tape on this college football season. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.